Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to another episode of my startup story. Um, we get to talk about every and anything that comes with running a startup in Nigeria. You know, the intricacies, the journeys, the tears, the sweats, the laughs, the joys and all. Um, today, we have three amazing people here um we have Moshud, we have david and we have please forgive me if i didn't pronounce the name right ego is that correct did i pronounce it well mm-hmm. I'm trying, I'm trying. Mm-hmm. okay <laughs> all right all right so i'm going to start with Moshud. hi everyone my name is Moshud Kalsar. hi I'm a student in the UBJO University and I'm currently studying compliance engineering. Um, I'm a mobile developer working at Advanced Technologies where I'm learning how to build mobile application using Flutter and it's been amazing so far because I was able to learn when it comes to fintech, when it comes to edutech and other aspects of technology and with that I was able to build the mobile application I launched last year from um, move on, on Play Store, but in the next few months, I'll be able to launch one on App Store. So, um, I'm a GDS student actually. Uh, what does GDS mean? GDS is Google Developer Students Group, where um, students from different universities are able to um, bridge the gap between theoretical knowledge and practical knowledge, and also students are able to learn peer to peer learning gain more experience on Google technologies. So yeah, mm-hmm. that's what the test is all about. And it's been amazing so far. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking out your time to talk to us. Thank you so much. All right. Uh David. My name, here. So my name is David. Hi David. Good afternoon. Hello. Hello. Um, my name is David Ajimba. I have been um, working in tech for a bit over four years now. I finished mm-hmm. school generally with an um, electrical and electronics degree and then just jumped right into tech. I started as a UI designer actually, um, mm-hmm. and then moved into front end development. And now I've um, over time had the privilege to like lead the team and all that, and expand into more um, bigger um, you know, tech responsibility. Um, most of my work has been with um, CoraPay payment network. Uh, mm-hmm. with, um, a fintech company in Nigeria. Actually, I, I actually started working with them as soon as I left school. And, uh, and it's more than four years with them now. I've done a couple of consult, uh, front-end consulting in um, companies um, here in Europe, um, a couple with blockchain companies, and then one with an energy company in, in the Netherlands as well. And yeah, I think generally I, I try as much as possible to stay at the forefront or to learn as much about yeah. like, web technologies. I keep on mm-hmm. betting on and on um, software development and just mm-hmm. how to work together to you know better the human experience. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. It's so nice to have you here, David. Thank you for taking out time to be here. Uh, finally, I want to know how to pronounce this name. So please let me know how it's actually pronounced. Please, can you pronounce the name? Ego? <laughs> no, yeah, I must get so... this before we leave this interview. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy actually, it's very easy. Okay. You say the word now. This is this is funny part. You say the word egg and up together. Okay. Pronounce so egg. egg up. Oh, great, great, right? Got it. Exactly. Got it. Got it. Hi. Yeah. Good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon. Yeah. So, introduction to myself. My name is David. Um, okay. Egg up, and you can call me Drones. By the way, okay. I. I like to make fun of this, but I'm, I'm no more a student, um, but I'm still in school. Mm, I, I relate to that up, deeply. deeply. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rounding up my electrical engineering degree, and mm. I've been in tech for, for, this is 
two plus years doing to mm-hmm. my now mm-hmm. and have been a product designer. Uh, the startup that was into edtech but now is into AI mm-hmm. and language transcription. So basically, that has been my tech journey. I create content on YouTube about design and how people let design in there. Yeah, that's basically it. Awesome. All right. Um, so we, we kind of missed the schools we all went. So let's just take turns and see. So I'm going to say, we, I got, what school did you go? Or what school are you in? Sorry. The school I went to. The school I went to. <laughs> Olivia University. Olivia University. Oh, you are. Oh. Okay. 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 Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Kasarat? Yes, yeah, same as David. What is your investigation of them? Beautiful. Uh, David? I went to Colonia University. Oh, Eagles. I'm not an Eagle, though. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, <interesting. laughs> yeah, I feel like if Musa was in Nigeria, that would probably be the school he would have gone, but it's okay. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, all right. Me, <laughs> yeah. All right, so I want to ask, what do you think about being Nigerian? and feeling Nigerian, you know, in this 21st century. So, you know, how how has it been like for you understanding the realities of being a Nigerian in these recent times? And what do you think about, just your general thoughts about being Nigerian? First of all, so your overview and then how it relates to you as a person. Yeah, I'm going to start with David. Yes. Um, I think... I think being in Niger- a Nigerian and how that relates to my work mm. is is very interesting um, because of for for a good majority of um, at least people within myself, but I know also um, very recently Stairs published an article about how technology has overtaken oil as Nigeria's biggest export. Yes. Yes drive or the desire to to use competence in technology or get to a tech job, a tech job or get into development has, yeah. has been over the last um, three, four years, yeah. right? Uh-huh. I also think that more, more, if anything that's spoken to my being Nigerian in tech is also being in the startup space as a uh-huh. Nigerian in tech. Uh-huh. And a Nigerian company who's had to like um, struggle through the Nigerian experience and um, break for I think it's 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 very interesting. Again, I, I use uh-huh. that word a lot. Uh-huh. Seeing how um, this system has changed and uh-huh. uh, how there's you know every two seconds there's one startup coming uh-huh. up and it. it Move generally from the stuff that used to get a lot of money, mm. right? You know, getting tech and um, fintech, and now people are doing more agri tech, people yes. are doing learning, people mm. are doing, uh, and Google raised a lot of money for mm. uh, mental uh, health, yeah. Uh, and mm. that is really and is really interesting having like the Nigerian entity, the Nigerian name, and the Nigerian uh, brand, especially from in the African point of view or looking at it from an outsider point inward mm-hmm. as yes. the tech um, headquarters in Africa. And I think that is that's really interesting. Or at least that that's how it that's how it um, affects me as my as my work. I've mm-hmm. had to meet a couple or I've met a couple of people here, this that's in Europe. And we talk to them and they're like, oh um or I talk about my experience and they're like, they say a couple of things. And I'm like, the, the financial space is a lot more complex in Nigeria than it is here, mm. right? Yeah, uh-huh. yes, there are a lot of things that are different. Um, but even when I moved here, there were just a lot of things I was like, why doesn't this just work? <laughs> like, uh. right? Like, and... Um, so it, it's uh, it's both a thing of pride and hope sometimes and in in the sense of there it's we are actually building a lot of competence right uh, and uh-huh. people are to do more interesting things that are just 
not, not just for quick money because mm-hmm. of the the path to money has become more clear. Um, yes. Also, it's the thing of it's still there's still a bit of concern in the sense of like um, you know everything rises and falls on you know, government regulation, right and and support and that. So there's still just concern. But altogether, I would say like being Nigerian and and its effect with in regards to my job or regards to the role I've played in tech, I think it's been more hopeful and, and um, interesting than anything else. Awesome. So I have one more bonus, one more question for you, David, before we move on. Do you what what's the difference? What has been the difference for you, you know, being between being Nigerian at home and being a Nigerian in diaspora? I think I think generally there's just more nationalist tendencies, right? Mm-hmm. Um, in first of like Chimamanda mentioned, I don't know, she mentioned in one of her talks the fact that the idea of being black it does mm-hmm. not exist or live. Uh, once you go to like the white man's land, right? Uh, it's there's there's no idea of being black. So then, what what divides us in Nigeria is more tribal and cultural. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. doesn't quite exist because of mm-hmm. you, you have you can be more nationalized, and this even cuts across to um to. Both work and technology right um there's there becomes more of a need to contribute to to the com- country and seeing that everything is working yeah there's, there's just more this it just becomes more need to contribute to the nigerian experience i think right. i i remember when i when i came here newly i Three months in, I reached out to one of my friends and I was like, I understand why people travel um, outside and then they come back with this vigor to change things in Nigeria uh, because of it. I always used to, I didn't, I always used to feel like oh, they came back with this savior mentality and they felt like they could do everything <laughs> right. in Nigeria. Right? And I used to diss them a lot <laughs> because they would most likely come back and fail. Right. Right. And right. <laughs> I I understand it, right? I I think that that effort should be made with someone that mm-hmm. is on ground now. But I understand why they right? Mm. Right? I understand when when you step out, you you generally tend to have more nationalist tendencies, and you want to to contribute as much as you you can. I think that that. In, in a lot of in a lot of ways is separating especially in work being in Nigeria versus in the diaspora, being in the diaspora. Um okay, thank you so much, David, um, for that. I think we'll just go to concern now. Um we'll ask you as well, basically, you know, for you, right? Um, you have your own space and how you ex- how will you explain like what you're doing right now? And what being in Nigeria and feels uh, means to you in this century? Yeah, being in Nigeria is actually an interesting one because I want to achieve that spirit. We are in Nigeria and if we are also um, a tech developer, we are a, just like a full time job being in Nigeria. So I like the fact that companies are um, empowering youth more like. Um, students or let's say Nigerians in, particular, in general that are interested in um, take, we have different internships available, we have free internships and mostly I do get this um, this message that oh I also I want to, um, I want to um, get started with uh, a career in tech and I'm like oh wow that's nice you can do this, you can do that like people are already picking up to the fact that it's not only um being a politician that you can make um different things in. Okay. Um thank you, Kosha. Awesome, awesome. Okay, and finally, uh Ego. Yes, I got it right this time. Yes, I did. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> okay. And draw uh, for me is as Kosha said, the free time job. 
and also like it's it's more of being able to adapt. But I think that's what we do mostly as Nigerians. We adapt faster than any other thing. I think it's something that we are not taught, but yeah. we grow to all learn it. Is being being in Nigeria like being able to adapt. We all grow to learn it, even right from childhood, right from being kids, where we are pushed to not doing certain things, and then we find and adapt to how to live without doing those things and how to move on. The country never gets any any less worse, but we find our way to make the most out of it all the time. And for me, that's like one thing that I do take of being Nigeria is being able to adapt. I think we are opportunists and for me that is that's the thing we do being able to adapt and see the opportunities every single time and in every single situation. Mm-hmm. People get pushed on to the fact that we are all going to look for PVC. We're all going to find how we vote. But even in that midst, there are people that are saying, oh, well, since people are coming this place like this, you know, we are going to um, print one certain banner and sell mm-hmm. 400 naira, 50 naira, and then make money out of it. This is not something that you can easily find elsewhere, but then you can see that Nigerians take that advantage immediately. Right, right. You, you would you see small groups of people gather somewhere, and one woman has already popped up from nowhere, and she's selling that car for everybody that is gathered in that place. It's <laughs> adapting to that situation, like being opportunities. That's for me. That that's being Nigerian. And in tech, it's basically almost similar. Being Nigerian in tech is we are seeing the opportunities are okay. If mm. I can write one or two lines of code, I can end this within the next six months. How do I do that? I just need to be following person where study would they do this, do this here and there, you know, and going going as hard as we can. That's that would that'll be my answer. That question did it. Awesome. <laughs> right. Okay, sorry, Kansa, you were gonna you were saying something. Yeah, so we were saying, what does it, what does it mean, you know, to you? What does it mean to be Nigerian, you know, in this twenty first century, as it relates to like your work, as it relates to your person, and just you know, generally. Yeah, it takes a whole lot of um, determination and consistency in the sense that we have different people that need to take actually. But what makes you stand out is the fact that if you are consistent with what you are doing and able to adapt, like. Um, David said, being an Nigerian and take a person very, very, very uh, easy because there are lots of communities that are helping students, um, helping people rather like to find their way in place. I think that's all I can say about like that. Um, awesome. Awesome. All right. All right. So um, I want to ask. If you were to explain to somebody, I mean, obviously, everybody and anybody knows what tech is about. But if you were to explain to somebody who was completely clueless, you know, about tech or anything tech related, how would you describe what you do? How would you describe what you do? So, you know, how would you break it down? Explain to me like I'm five-year-old. What is front-end engineering? What is UI, UX? What is, you know, what's all of that? So I'm going to start with Ego. How would you explain what you do? Or how would you describe what you do? To somebody who's completely uh, clueless. Yeah. Okay. So that person is my mother actually. Beautiful. And how would I explain to her? Beautiful. So she keeps asking. Please. I think I, I, I'm going to ask that question at the end of this interview. You know, how you got your parents, to come, <laughs> how you convinced your parents that you, you actually really employ that you're not just pressing phone or person computer. <laughs> Uh, right, well, how would you describe so what is, you do? Okay, so this is how I would do it. Is I this is how I tell my mom. So mommy, you know, now this is how I explain it to go. I'm, I'm just using this this you know, this script. So mommy, right. you know how right. you want to um register for go TV and you go to the place where they are paying go TV and you give them your money and then they press their computer and then you go to the start working. Uh-huh. So you see that computer that they are pressing, but that's thing that they are doing. There is a screen in front of them, and they are moving between different pages or different places that they are searching. And here, I used to be part of the people that used to design all those things for them. Okay. Then I work with the people that used to make it work. By the time I finished designing it, then 
I now give it to the other people. That's the developers. That's what they call them. Then those people are the ones that will make it connect so that when you go home, you're going to start working automatically. Okay. That's one analogy. Another analogy that I've used to explain to her is, you know how mommy, you go to the bank and you want to send money to me when I'm in school and you give them the money and they tell you that, okay, you should write your name on a piece of paper and give it to them and then they'll be looking at the screen to see your face. All those things that they are doing in their computer, we used to be the person to design it. The same thing with the ATM. When you go to the ATM and you're pressing your card, uh -huh, I used to design all those things like that. So basically that will explain to, I think to me that's the very minimal way to explain <laughs> what I do as a designer. Does she, does, she, does she seem to get it though? Yes, she, oh, she does. Sometimes she, <laughs> she makes fun and be like, oh, you are the uh, UI UX product electrical engineer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, awesome. Awesome. David? So yeah, what I would say is that yeah, you when you interact with your phone, when you interact with your laptop, when you interact with anything, right? I make it possible, right, for you to send to interact with your phone or interact with your laptop, and then it actually goes ahead to do something. Right. So I think that that is a proper representation of what front end is. We, mm -hmm. we make it there. I serve as the layer between you and the phone. Mm -hmm. Right. Awesome. That, I think that that kind of um, it, it, in a sense it touches on UI experience and UI design, mm -hmm. but in principle mm -hmm. that that's what I would put like um, my work on. Also, like the technical implementation of how you can interact with your your device or how you can interact with your service. Right. I have a question to ask you before I um, I move to Casa. I, before you got into tech, I mean, you probably didn't pay attention to like technicalities and whatnot. But since you right. actively got into tech, can you look at like mobile applications the same way again without like trying to crack how they put this together, how they put that together? And whatnot. No, actually, no. Like on some on some ends, you you see an app, right? Uh, how I say, I think is more you you tend to appreciate more things, right? Because mm. mm. so, of, for example, you see an app, you see how it works, or you see a website, and you're like that. Yeah. I know how much work and how much uh, emphasis. Mm -hmm. it will then also of course is you, you, you no longer have the all uh, before I even got into tech I had an eye for design so I got mm -hmm. into corrupt as a UI design intern but but um when you are in the when you're in the industry then you then realize that oh you have like the eye just is all mm -hmm. important is a lot everything is a lot more visible right. to you mm -hmm. right? and then you can either appreciate more or criticize more uh -huh. right uh -huh. um i i yeah just not to get upset with a lot of things i i, I tend to focus more on the appreciating more so mm -hmm. if you see it like uh, I, and then you see some interesting stuff and then sometimes yeah there's a lot of people do that i don't know how they did it and mm -hmm. it's uh, interesting to figure out, okay, how did this work? Uh, how conceptually could this um, be put together? So it, it is very interesting working and, and seeing an app or seeing how um, the animation works, how, how was the transition between page to page, all of those things are, are really interesting. Awesome, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much. All right, Kausa. How would you describe what you do? Yeah, for being a uh, mobile de developer, it's more like a time stuff, so more like both front end and back end. Now, imagine you get to app uh, Play Store or App Store or let's say the mobile application you have on your phone, just like Facebook, WhatsApp, or so on. Yeah, as a mobile developer, we are the one in charge of the design and the backing of that particular design. So all what you're seeing on the screen, let's 
um, take for instance um, Facebook, the icons you are seeing, the pictures, um, the interaction that is on that particular Facebook page. As a mobile developer, we are the one in charge, and also we have different backend um, backend more like you can use API and also interact using different databases. We have Firebase also, but awesome. mobile development in particular is just about the design. We use we have different or uh, different ways of building mobile applications to go. I personally am making use of Flutter because Flutter is like a cross platform where we have for both we have designs for both iOS Android, Mac OS, so we don't need to stress ourselves with writing different languages that, that will suit um, different um, platforms. So with Flutter, we are able to design mobile applications that works on different cross platforms. So that's what mobile development is really about. Beautiful. Thank you for, for, uh, for explaining, for sharing. All right. So the next question I want to ask is, so two questions, actually. How did you transition into tech? And is it something you were interested in initially or you got into it and then started loving it? So did you did you um, first enter, right? And then you're now like, oh, this is actually cool. Let's, let's actually pursue this. Or you were interested from the get-go. And how did you, how did you transition into tech if you transitioned? Uh, how's that with Council? All right. When I gained admission into Odejo University, at first, I didn't even know what to start, where to start from because right from secondary school, I had this in mind that, oh, I was going to study medicine as country. Mm -hmm. But then Nigerian um, universities and all, I could not get into, um, I was actually like, I had this in mind to go to you know, learning, but one of the things happened, so I had to mm -hmm. um, switch to Odejo University. When I got to where I was going to get my phone, there was nothing like medicine and surgery, so I had to choose computer engineering. I don't like to, I didn't, I don't even know what computer engineering was all about. I just was like, let me just choose this thing and I would switch or something like that. So, yeah. So in my hundred level, um, the well, I added like I didn't have anything in mind in particular because I felt like mm, I want to study medicine and surgery. So, my parents were like, don't worry, just focus, you you can make it, stuff like that. So, so I met with few people in school and they were like, mm, you can start learning Python, you can start learning this. I was just like, what mm. is this about? But then I was able to read my HSD and I was like, oh, you can start learning Python. So I felt like, oh, nice. Then as of 2020, during that lockdown period, I think I was in the sun level. Yeah. So I came across Wayne that is the work and artificial intelligence in Nigeria. So I enrolled because I felt like the things we could do just like sitting down at home doing nothing. As I then I was curious to know more about what it is all about. So I enrolled for a month in So I started learning automation where I could uh, where I was learning how to make all these simple, simple projects like um, traffic light, uh, mm. ultrasonic sensors, different sensors, how we can interact with both hardware and software. And I made use of um, Arduino then. Arduino is just like the software. So I made use of Arduino and then in 300 level year, we do see it and we all took to look for our business where we could do our internship and also I came across advanced technology and I told them that although I had it in mind to like I really took interest in artificial and intelligence in machine learning also because I felt like it could be good if I can know what um if I can build solutions using smart systems. So I told them where I um as a where I did the internship that oh I feel like learning more on AI and machine learning and because like you don't really have people that can train me on that so I can actually learn more about development. So that was how I started learning Flutter. Mm. So that's my journey. So awesome. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so I'll ask, how has tech changed your life? Yeah, in a good way, actually. In a good mm-hmm. way, because mm-hmm. I've been able to build um like two to three solutions mm-hmm. to problems. Yeah, so for instance, as a last year, I launched my first mobile application filter. So what I did was the app as um a section where students can get fast questions, um resources where they can download resources to learn and practice for um, either examination or classwork. This is then taking online to find if there's a the class um, first question or so. so I made it in the sense that I just built the app, then students can connect with one another, then connect with lecturers also. So, and students are very keen at me that, oh, culture, I like the app. I was able to do this. Ah, I was able to do that. So I was even actually like, after the message, that, mm, nice. Yeah, that must have been fulfilling. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you for sharing. All right. I got, so let me, let me uh, say the questions again. How did you transition into tech? Um, did you stumble on it and then get interested later or you were interested from the get-go? And then, you know, how has tech changed your life? So it's like three questions in one. Okay. Um, how did I get into tech? And if uh-huh. I stumbled on it, yeah. So I would say, right, um, from the point of living secondary school, I have always uh-huh. been around tech but not yeah. directly in terms of um, software engineering or code or mm. design. I've always been in the hardware aspect of like, you know, editing videos, make certain sound systems and mm. all of that. So that's where I've always been. So moving from that space into university and studying electrical engineering, I had friends and my friends then were, they were designers, they were designing architectural buildings, machine parts, and just those are like yeah, their tech then. They were designing machine parts, architectural buildings, and some of them were coding. Uh. So there's a community in our school called Ripotech, and they were part of Ripotech, and they had a tech event. And so from the tech okay. event, I was already interested. Like So it was not like I stumbled upon. There was like an easing process for me because I already had that idea of, oh, this is, I knew what, you know, tech was in terms of um, what video editing is, other aspects. But I also wanted to learn machine learning and I also wanted to learn front-end development. So I went okay. into it for my friends from the Tech events, from the group, and I started learning how to code. I learned how to code for almost six months. Wow. And then I moved into yeah, UX product design and that's been product design for the past two years plus, basically. Um, and awesome. that, that was it. That's since my 300 level, that's when I've been like product design, 400 level product design, right? Yeah. Beautiful. How, how has, uh, has tech changed your life? How would you say tech has changed your life? Basically, that's changed now. The inside, inside part of tech that I've been in, that's changed my life in terms of everything it has changed mm. my thinking it has changed my circle of friends it has mm. changed how i view problems and solutions so awesome. i would say that it's been positive even though you can count negative aspects because okay. being in tech there is this thing that they will not tell you but it happens is you have a higher tendency of becoming a workaholic the moment mm. you start getting into tech so mm-hmm. that, that I would say is like negative part because I always, 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 always get carried away by work. Correct. But in terms of my thinking, in terms of how I think about solutions, you think about problems and look at things, definitely that has changed because mm-hmm. you tend to be humble. <laughs> Take a humble mm-hmm. form of that. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, all right, David, you're up. Yeah, I think I'll first... Um, I agree with um, a lot on the fact that tech, working tech does, especially working now that remote work is becoming more. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
the lines between um, work and home are, are <laughs> getting blurred by the second. So it's very easy to like get um, yeah. swallowed up in work. And I think it's also because of tech probably more than any other field of work, right? You generally tend to yeah. see, um, let's say, you generally tend to see the, the actual result of your actions almost near instantly. So yeah. if you're, if you're yeah. designing something and you change, you change the size of a button, right? You see it, right? So you, it, we don't have the delay in like cause and effect that most other um, yeah. industries Industry. have. So yeah. Mm -hmm. When you have that, you no, know, you do this, you get this, you do it, you get this. It's so much easier for you to want to do more, to mm -hmm. get more. Right. Um, and mm. then you have to be more great about that. I personally actually didn't get into tech out of the desire for tech. I wow. I had a, a training, I had a background in electrical and electronics engineering, so I knew a bit of C and Python, but even in my uh -huh. 400 lessons where some of my classmates were getting to web development and um, actual like um, tech as we know it, or that is more popular, um, I had absolutely no interest in it. I mm. wanted to do business and I wanted to actually work on um, technology in the sense of the um, physics aspect of tech. Wow, um, so interesting. Yeah. And, and then I got enamored by blockchain mm. and mm. I applied to the first blockchain company in Nigeria at the time. And the rest they say is history because of I, I, I wanted to work. <laughs> I wanted to work. I wanted to work in the business. I wanted to understand the business of blockchain, mm. and I, uh, that that got me into karate, and um, you know, and I, then it was just a thing of how could you add value to the company, and the easiest and the way the company needed value at the time was through and developers. And so I had to learn uh, web development and yeah. Oh, um, sorry, so what was the, what are, you know, is the question I haven't answered. Yes, how has tech challenges. changed your life? How has it changed my life? I think, aside from things that have been mentioned by Igor and um, Marshall, I think yes. the, the thing is um access i think it's giving me access uh, that's yeah. something, something i really preach to a lot of people uh, and and this is not even as a developer as as anyone working in tech even a content writer um, uh, a marketing a product marketer or product developer um, product manager i I have seen if there's something I can see all through everyone is access and access and flexibility, right? Um, the amount of access, for example, just the, the, the growth of the tech industry in Nigeria has opened people to so much. Like, and this is not even within the tech industry. A lot of people who, I know people who got um, a lot of gigs right um for the most random things right uh, and all of this happened because google came to nigeria yes and yes. You know, somebody linked you to do something one google event and all of a sudden you have international exposure and yeah. oh, before you know it's like this and this happened right uh, so even with, within people, developers, and the ability to work remotely, so much access, so much flexibility. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then the third party services around tech also experience that amount of access, right? And I think it is probably the most important way that tech has changed in my life. Wow. I, I, I do not take that for granted at all.
Mm. Because of, for example, I just finished the master's program and oh, all through congratulations. Through, thank you very much. And through that process, I was working. Mm-hmm. Of course, I do not recommend this because it is the ghetto, but I was <laughs> working. <laughs> and I could only do that in the capacity that which I did, right? Because mm-hmm. I was working in tech. Right. And so um, I do not take that for granted. Yeah. So that's mm-hmm. the most that's the most critical way that tech has to my life. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, I want to ask you guys a question. Do you guys think tech is oversaturated? As of right now? Do you think there's too many people in tech? Like it's everywhere. I mean, obviously it's everywhere, but do you think do you think that it's oversaturated? I think yes and no. Okay. Right. I think and to preface this, to preface my answer, I would say that the jobs and and work always follow the prevailing industry, right? Uh-huh. So in during the time, for example, that the US was um, going for having their space race. Right, one of the one of the that was actually the, the you know the um, the birth period of tech as we know it, but it's not it's not the same tech as as we we do okay. right um, now. It's right. more heavy um. computing and algorithms and and serious this analogous to what we have as machine learning now, the deep tech, yeah. uh. right. And that was because of that is where, like, at least that was the, you know, there was, that was the industry. That was what the, the you know, the cutting edge of science uh-huh. and technology was at the time, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. Now, uh, now, mo- especially in Nigeria, most of the industry is on services, right? Uh-huh. Um, unfortunately, services don't require as much hard quality. As as uh, normal, no, most times you get to experience hard like complex tech when you're dealing with scale of services rather than actually giving the service themselves. Mm, mm, uh, mm, mm, mm. And so, in the, in the beginning part, the building of the services, right? I think the, you can see the bit saturated because there are so many people, right? Um, but as the industry is maturing and as you see, as you start moving upwards, you start seeing that there aren't actually enough people who break that barrier of living the, mm-hmm. the or who have learned enough to leave the introductory starting point, uh, if I would say, right, and make mm-hmm. it out there. So yes, I know because of, if you don't have enough people at the bottom of the pyramid in sports, right, it doesn't quite move upward, right? So we mm-hmm. definitely need a lot more people in senior roles. We need a lot more infrastructure. We need a lot of pe- more people branching out into deep tech in Nigeria. We need a lot more um, deals. So we have very little to none of that, right? Wow. Both wow. the introductory, like, um, Basic product development. There are so many developers and there are so many product designers and so many product developers. But we need those guys to get up. And so, yeah, and that's that. In my opinion, that's yes and no. Mm. Awesome. I would, I would okay, agree so, with you. Oh, beautiful! I, would, I was going to ask you. I was going to ask for your opinion as well. <laughs> I, would, I would agree with David. How I see it is, it's saturated with noise, not with actual mm. work. Wow. So is it is like when you mostly in Nigeria is like when you when you cook stew and you put thyme and curry and the whole house they smell they even they <laughs> nice they back and you actually reach the pots you leave the, your room and you go to the pot and you look into the pot and you see that I'm all, there's not like there's only two meats that is inside the stew but the whole house is scenting there's aroma everywhere but it's not enough so mm-hmm. that's basically how tech is in Nigeria is that. Uh, there's a lot of noise everywhere about people going to tech, about how much tech people make, about how easy it is. 
by the time you get there, you see that the people that are making those noise are basically the people that are doing the shallow part of tech. Like, yeah, it's very nice, but it's good. It's mm. true that, yes, there are people there, but then it's just the shallow part. Is for let me say, yeah, let me use design because I'm a designer. It's people that are doing jobs, X amount of jobs for clients that need small, small pay for designs. Right. And these jobs are not up to quality. They are doing it because they want the money. Now, that's, mm-hmm. that's not tech because that's just you capitalizing on the need for a certain, for a certain client and making money off it. But that's, that's basically not tech. By the time you start going deep into actually solving problems, for example, now like the the fintech space in Nigeria right. is a lot of news. There's a lot of news about how the fintech is saturated with a lot of solutions. Yeah. I myself have said that. Oh, yes. but you, lot. you really okay? I should hold on. No, no, go on, go on. I'm, okay. I'm but if you really, that, like it, it's quite a lot. Yes, but if you really look into it, right now, how do you bring fintech down to a market woman? That collects mm. cash. I want Beautiful. to go home. I mm-hmm. want to. Yeah, how do you allow like somebody that is you know that has only a card and they want to sell and buy paper? How do you mm-hmm. tell that my mother? Okay, mom, I'll give you my card, but you you know you give me paper fifteen naira. How do you solve that problem with fintech? Right. They mm-hmm. all those infrastructures are not yet available, okay, but so. you see that. But there's a lot of fintechs. It's fintech for this. There's fintech for that. It's basically the same thing. With exactly what David said, we, we need people who can like basically solve problems on a more deeper scale, who can build infrastructures and like scale these infrastructures well, not people who are craving about how much they will make in the next six months and then mm. always putting out on Twitter that ah, this blood money, blah, blah, blah. That's that's where it's saturated. It's saturated with a lot of noise. And the people that are actually doing the work are not the people making the noise. Mm-hmm. That's that's my thoughts on that. Mm, that's beautiful the people doing the work are not the ones making the noise what to live by <laughs> all right uh Kansa, how would you say young people can you know hone their talent so developers designers tech engineers how would you or what do you think or how do you think they can really build themselves up like david and Egop have said how do you think they can actually step up to the game and really get into solving problems rather than just being just another name in the industry or just another or adding to the number, you know, essentially. How do you think that can work? All right. Don't just um don't just talk something. I feel like you mm, have created this, this should be okay for you. You know, you have to like move along the way the country is, the way the industry is better. News um, problems are coming up so so also um Okay, I think let me ask David. David, how do you think young people in the tech industry can really hone their, their talent or hone their craft and just really step up to, to the game, you know? Um I think I think the the first thing is is to step out of your comfort zone. Step out. Yeah. Hmm. Step out of your comfort zone and, and go into what you think is interesting, right? I am a very big um, personally. I I don't know how to learn if I if I don't if I don't find a way to apply something. In the sense of I I can understand the theoretical um, workings of how like a certain technology works, but I generally don't go into like um how do you say examples and tutorials if i don't have any way i'm going to apply it like that professionally or for a particular project now this is not knocking mm-hmm. off on tutorials and side projects but if that is if you know, someone's listening to this and they they enjoy doing that by all means do that but i would advise growth generally comes from meeting complex problems right mm. you you experience especially in tech you you experience most of the growth when you have to deal with complex problems and normally you find those complex problems when you are applied right it doesn't have to always be for you find them so the, the, the idea is if you want to if you want to 
do something crazy, if you want to like move to the next level, find an application where that mm. be that applying to a company has been something that's interesting. Working on an open source project that's preferably an open source project that has been on for a while, where there is complex code and complex problems being um, worked on. Right, and mm -hmm. seeing how you can apply yourself to that, or sure, you can go, you can go one on one with a couple of your friends. Where if you're going to work on a side project, try to see to a point where people are actually using it, and you get to experience those complex, um, those complexities. Because yeah, that that's really what separates you. Because like I said um, in the last lesson, a lot of a lot of things aren't in the making of the service itself, right? Um, because of, thankfully, um, code and the logic of doing things are, are pretty much understood at this point, right? And every, you can bicker around which is the fastest implementation, but in general terms, most people know how to get what, from A to B. Our, or rather right, you can easily find information how to get from A to B, right? Yeah. Yeah. Being able to get the nuance and being able to know what will be better comes from saying, oh, when I do this or when this happens, what would I have wished I did or what would be the best way to position myself? And you can't, you won't learn that if the product or if you're not applied out there. So that's what I would say. I would say, step out of your comfort zone most definitely um even if you feel um some sort of imposter syndrome mm. you can easily start with an open source project you know open source project you don't owe anybody anything right um, and so create a pull request fill you with stuff uh last last if, if they don't like it they won't make your pull request <laughs> right and they won't know you <laughs> so right yeah. <laughs> Awesome. So awesome. I, I think I'm um, against people who do who contribute to open source by like working on documentation. Like, of course, if if that is if your if your goal is to contribute to as much open source and documentation is important, by the way. Mm. But yeah, but if you're going with the idea of building like competence, then yeah, an open source project is an easy way to to test out very complex things without fear of. Uh, video for example awesome beautiful how so what has been your biggest challenge so far in tech in tech what would you say in your biggest challenge so far my biggest challenge so far is fear of not doing well or of not um meeting up with what the industry is all about because when i started i felt like i used to see a whole lot of um, posts on linkedin that this to say uh, I did this, this to say I did this. So I felt like hmm, I don't think I can actually like really um, improve or mix with these people in this industry. So when I started, I felt like hmm, there's no way I can um, improve. So I felt like I was not doing well because I would see a particular person and I feel like this, this could have been me if I started earlier. But then this time I was able to like start up. I had to join community where I had I met different people and they were like they were assuring me that don't worry, you can do this. We also started like this. So this time I was able to like kind of catch up and feel amongst mm -hmm. people. Then that was my biggest thing. That was my biggest challenge rather so fast. I felt like I was not doing well, I was not gonna do well in the industry. Mm. How about you? Yeah. Um, my big, my biggest challenge. That's that, that was what I was thinking about. <laughs> I would say, I would say, um, my biggest challenge would be being comfortable. Mm. Like, I don't, I, I personally do not like to be comfortable. But also, there is a, is it? I think there's a thin line between understanding where you are which is good appreciating where you are 
and then also being comfortable, like being carried away or being comfortable. I do appreciate how far I've come in tech, and then that helps, that at least leads to me being very, very, um, I don't know the word to use, very, very, very chilled about, yeah, yeah, you, you know, you're good. Yeah, you're a good mm-hmm. designer, you can chill right now. And then also, being comfortable is not a good thing. So understanding for me, right, the challenge is understanding when you are comfortable, or like when you are too comfortable. To me, that's that's my biggest challenge so far. It just sticks to my head sometimes when like I'm chilling, you know, and I see other people's work. I'm like, oh, I'm not there yet. Mm. But then I'm like, you know what? Uh, they are just doing their thing. Let me just relax. So that's that's just my biggest challenge so far. Like knowing the line between too comfortable and like comfortable. Right, right. Mm. I think that's important actually. And in every and anything, knowing when you know you're 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 too comfortable and when you're just you're just the right amount of comfortable all right david how about you what has been your biggest challenge so far i think um it's i agree with well not necessarily being too comfortable i i think it's just managing um growth right because of it is there is the there is the uh, um real possibility of like getting locked in right especially in a in a um in a growing company in a bigger company right you get very locked in and then you get super specialized and and um, for me, it's also been a bit, a bit more challenging because of then you have to pick up, I mean, your position to pick up a bit more responsibilities than just, um, you know, being an individual contributor. And so there's that managing. So growth now is a bit more different. It's a bit more different than just knowing, than writing the best code or knowing where yeah. things are. It, it's across multiple dimensions. And trying not to be on one too much and then lose the touch of the other and and do you know managing that entire situation has been very interesting actually um but but I recognize that you know it is part of things and you know be that you don't know, get to understand and be more forgiving I think of people right mm-hmm. uh, when so people who are like that their boss their boss um doesn't understand the technical aspect and like the person will be your generally would not be your boss if they didn't and except like there's nepotism and stuff like that or the person or you just needed a more um near some of these better organization than actual implementation uh. um but then it it keeps on pulling, right? And if you don't uh, being great, being a a competent person in tech, being a competent developer in my case, right, is something that you keep on needing to practice, right? Mm-hmm. There are a lot of people on Twitter who say that oh they've been working in tech for ten years, eleven years, and still have to Google um, how to center a div. Right, yeah. mm. do that. I do absolutely no shame. Sometimes I know what I want to do, right? But just because I don't want to think of how to do it, I just Google it with absolutely no shame, right? And it's like you can uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I say I can't. So. Right. <laughs> It's one of those things that you have to, because of the logic is, like I said, is very similar, but this, the actual implementation, you have to keep on, like, you have to keep on, like, practicing that. So taking three months without working on a project or on anything, by the time you come back, your body will tell you that you've, that you've been out for quite a bit. So, mm. but then again, there are other responsibilities. So that, that has been the um, 
that's been probably the biggest um, sure. change for me. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. All right. So I have, you know, for yourself in tech and, you know, what does the future look like for you? What, what are your plans? What aspirations do you have? What are you currently working on for yourself? All right. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to learn more or let's say know more about artificial and intelligence because I just feel like they should be able to solve different solutions ranging from different aspects, different sectors. Um, I would love to like, I don't want to go into things actually, because <laughs> like David said, saturated and all, but then I would um, love to incorporate AI and machine learning when it comes to educate all students, learn on autistic. Let's say I have my own startup or um, making people have different knowledge of what we can do different internships and from then they are able to build that stuff and also build solutions in the in the society. Awesome. That's beautiful. We're well, rooting for you and you know we're excited to see all of that happen. Uh how about you Ego? What plans what what are your dreams? What dreams do you have for yourself in, in, in the industry? And what do you what are you what are your plans? What's the future looking like for you? Awesome. So well, I have I have dreams to definitely build products that people would use and be part of mm -hmm. things that build products that definitely solves the problem, like a direct problem for people. I my plans for the next, you know, I can't tell what will happen in the next five years, but my plans for the next one, two years is to make sure that I preach my message of it's not just design. Solving problem is not just design. Basically, for designers, Nigeria, trying as much as I can with my YouTube and other platforms I have is to get people into tech and mm. make sure that design itself is not looked at from a mediocre point because that's what it is right now. You know, like, hey, it's just design, it's just design. To so look at the meaning of solving actual problems with it and. Mm. Generally, using that, you know, that all means to solve problems. Definitely, I'm still learning. I'm still like learning a lot in terms of like design. I still have a lot of 3D stuff to learn in design. But then it's to build generally build products and solve problems directly. Yeah. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful, beautiful. Uh, David, how about you? So um, generally, I'm I'm moving to build more competency in managing engineering teams. Actually, I I would want to learn a bit more about. So I mentioned I'm, I'm currently like a technical lead, and I I want to go on that path and. More than just managing people in terms of being nice to people, how to manage um, performance engineers and manage them in a way that leads to more performance. Mm. Um, and yeah, in a couple of years, I'll be also setting up my own thing. So I'll also be hiring developers that's an adding to the saturated market. Well, it's not <laughs> going to be anything, but, but yeah. Um, but it's you know, yeah, the, the idea is I'm more going towards the um managing part of tech than the actual um, contribution mm -hmm. part, right? Which is exciting and mm -hmm. uh interesting, I think. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, beautiful, beautiful, yeah, awesome. yeah. Sorry, sorry to cut you, um, yes, please. Yeah, so I think in my response, I was a little bit big. Listening to David now, I was like, ah, I'm <laughs> kind of big, very big. So I would say, right, I have been learning a lot about designing for AI, product designers okay. for AI. And to me, that's one of the most interesting things I would love to spend the next one year working on. So next mm. for me, like, what I'm looking forward to is perfecting product design for AI specifically. 
Uh, yeah, that's that's more specific. Solving problems for that that's very specific. Nice. I feel like you know there's been a lot of transitioning with you guys. Like it's like you started at point A, but now you're looking to explore points point O, point P. And I think that's really beautiful. And would you say that you know? Or do you think that tech allows you that opportunity as against other industries? Like, oh, you can start as a this and explore this, or do you think not? <laughs> Me? Yes, as against like other industries. Oh. You can start like, yeah. The thing is that you can't do the same, you can't do the same thing with other industries. Is the ease of access that is the thing. So mm. as mm. as an electrical engineer. If you work very well with architects, it may be difficult, but you can learn to draw like uh, wiring plans for buildings because as an electrical engineer, the same thing with being um, a product designer or being in tech. By the time you learn how to be a content or a technical writer, you basically have to know the, 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 the topic you're working on. You know, so if you are a technical writer that's writing articles for Golang, I have a friend that does that. He already really, really knows how the Golang structure is. He knows how AI works. He knows how other platforms work. He knows all those things. Transitioning into becoming a developer would be very smooth because he has that knowledge. Mm-hmm. If you are, it's like yeah. switching between writing React to go and start writing, React Native to go and start writing Flutter. So they are basically the same tool for building mm-hmm. cross platform applications, right? But the thing about it is that the languages would have similarities. Oh, there may be differences, but languages will be similar. So you're already know, oh, this is for this and this is for this. You are not learning from scratch again. So I think that's that's why it seems so easy for us to transition between this particular skill set yeah. tech to this skill set because you know mm. the you have to know the basics of all of them. Then it's now oh, oh this is not the differences. So to me, that's that's my answer mm. to that question. Beautiful. Kausa, do you agree with, with yeah, Beckham? I, yeah, I agree. Once you know about um, object-oriented language, you are good to go because most language, they actually look alike. If you look at that and um, Python and some other high-level languages, the, the way they write them is almost similar. It's just syntax and system. So you are always um, able to adapt or let's say um, get more used to a particular language and so it's easier to speak once you know the basics. Yeah. Useful. All right. Um, I, I think we've asked this question before, but I just want to ask again, what advice would you guys give to young people in tech space? Well, if you were to tell them one thing today, you know, what would you say? <laughs> what would you say to them? Uh, they should actually okay, okay, no, outside, you can go first. Yeah, anyone can, they should actually think outside the box because mm. we have many people that are into tech already, but what makes you stand out? Yeah, mm-hmm. so you have to think outside the box. Don't just um build um projects, you should work on a solution to a particular problem. Don't just build projects, we have different projects, it's just like you start saying. Um, it to do up. We have we already know that it's to do up. But what makes that um to do up that you're doing? What does it um what makes it different from what others are doing? You have to like think outside the box. You get and be consistent also. Yeah, don't um start now. You feel like um you will do it later also. No, it's you won't be able to catch up with the way the industry is actually going. So you have to be mm-hmm. consistent with what you are doing. Then from there you would see the goals. And yeah, don't give up. <laughs> don't give up. <laughs> because if you give up now you fall for because tech industry the community is welcoming. Everyone there's no um um language that you still want to learn today that you want to see people that have done what you want to start now. That's why Stack Overflow is everyone's friend. So it's easier for you to like adapt with what going on. So the community is actually a big one and helping 
they would help you. So don't be afraid that you can't do it here. You can see it. Just start from somewhere and definitely you can see things to touch your brain. Thank you. Thank you, Kamsa. Okay, Ego, what would you say to young people in the tech industry? I say this to young people and to older people, everybody. Okay. Ego, <laughs> ego is your biggest enemy. And to me, ego is your biggest enemy. And ego is not just a junior CEO talking to an older, um, probably an older developer saying, hey, I want you to do this. And you said, ah, this guy ego gets. No, that's, that's not ego. Ego is being able to put your head down and learn the work that you're supposed to learn. Ego is your biggest enemy because ego would make you feel that you have arrived at a point where you are just a very tiny dot closer to mm. losing it. Ego is mm. your biggest enemy in everything you're doing in tech, right? The, the person that is gatekeeping on Twitter is not your enemy. The person that is telling you that Google costs on Twitter is not is not your enemy. The person that is refusing to honor sports for you because you want to learn, that person is not your enemy. It's your ego that is your biggest enemy. And by the time you're able to solve that, you'll find it easier to do other things. And to solving that ego, I think everybody should read the book, Ego is the Enemy by Ryan Holiday. To mm. me, that's, that's my advice to anybody going into tech. Older people, younger people, that's just... Beautiful words on marble. Ego is your biggest enemy. Hmm. Awesome. I think that's applicable to everybody, honestly, not just people in tech generally. That's solid advice. Yeah. Solid, solid, solid advice. Thank you. Thank you. All right, David. Uh, what advice do you have for young people in tech? Um, I think aside from what everyone has said, yeah, I think. Well, to add to that ego bit, right, it is just to always, always, always try to learn something. Mm. And and if if you're not learning, if you don't find anything interesting, right, if you're not learning because you don't find anything interesting, then you need to actually evaluate um what you're doing mm. and of course there are there are real problems in terms of like money that might hinder you like moving past it because of it's not stuff is no longer interesting to you but at least you have you're clear about that and then you need to find what is interesting what gives you interest and how that can work with whatever you're doing this is assuming you're working if you're not right always or if, if this is not the situation you are in, always try to learn, always be in the process of learning something. This does not mean actively taking a tutorial or actively mm. taking a course, but um, this means, you know, being up to date with, when you see something in the news, you're like, oh, this is interesting, delving deeper, right? Always try to learn something. Oh, yeah, because of the desire to learn, comes from interest, right? It shows it is the biggest indicator that you're still interested in what you're doing. And I think interest is probably the best thing that determines if you're going to improve or not. Um, but if you're able to maintain your interest in the in the work in the in the concepts you're learning, mm. then it's the sky is literally your limit uh, sky is your limit. So always be mindful of your interest I would say right um, and being mindful of your interest means also not doing things that rob you of it one of such things is uh, over oh, putting yourself in positions where you do a lot of work without seeing effort mm. but what people would normally say as like tutorial hell avoid that because of when you keep on doing things that that don't lead to um that you, that you know yourself or you tell yourself right would not lead to anything other than just you doing it over time 
it keeps it robs you of the interest to do them, right? Mm-hmm. And that's why I you mm-hmm. that doing non-trivial work that actually has impact because of the impact. If you if you succeed or if you don't if you succeed, it, it boosts your interest. If it doesn't if it doesn't succeed, right? You can either reevaluate your interest or it will give you uh, more. Uh, motivation to find out why you didn't succeed. All of that is easy. But if you keep on doing stuff that you know is just doing sick, it will keep on gradually rubbing your brain interest in to work or to do a project. And I think that is something that um, you should always be mindful. And that is that. And then there's also even just the working style, right? If you're overworking yourself, right? you're going to lose interest. If you're working on necessary hours, you're going to lose interest, right? It will no longer be exciting for you. It's just going to be another thing, right? That's, that's always, I think, the path that once you, once you start seeing yourself losing interest, that's always the path that, uh, that's, everything just starts going downhill from there, mm. I would say. Mm. So yeah. guard your interest, like be very mindful of it. Uh, that's what I would tell anybody that's getting into the industry right now. Thank you for sharing. Thank you guys so much. This has been super, super insightful. I, I have a few more questions to ask you as though. Um, so at Naruption, right, we are primarily focused on nation building. And so, you know, as much as we delve into the exciting world of startups and, you know, just career talk and all of that, it's also important that we find a way to speak about the current state of Nigeria as against what it should be. So I want to ask you guys, what is your dream Nigeria or what would be Nigeria of your dream? And how close do you think we are to that dream? And how do you think we can get there? Sorry, I'm asking too many questions at once. Okay. I think it's easier for the people in Nigeria to start. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, then I would, I would, I would answer them. So the Nigeria of my dream is a Nigeria where education is accessible to everybody, not school. Education is accessible to everybody, where we all are evolving with knowledge about what is and what is what is not. To me, that's like a that's that's Nigeria my dream. So it's that way it's easier for all of us to grow, it's easier for an economy to improve if education is accessible to everybody. Mm. And how I think we can yeah. get there. Okay. And how I think we can get there is if we prioritize teaching and learning. So what I mean we all of us we teach, we teach our parents what is and what is not, because you know, our parents have knowledge about certain things, but not everything. And you can't, if it's their knowledge is, if their knowledge is enough, we would not be where we are. That's why mm, we are also learning that's, as well. That's so good. That's so, so, so good. So good. So good. Mm, beautiful. Pitch, wow. Then, Gems have been spent in this interview. These things people pay for. Masterclass for free. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. I think that's that's very beautiful. Very beautiful. Probably one of the most profound things I've heard this week. You know, if they have knowledge, wow, psh, my mind is blown. Thank you so much, Professor Ego Aristotle Socrates, <laughs> for sharing, for giving us like giving us things, <laughs> for giving us things to yeah, ponder on. You know, mm. think about it. But I don't have a journal, so I have I have been taking notes. But yeah, all right, David. Oh, you said people in Nigeria for Sokosa. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Apart from what um, David has said, I think insecurity also. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the, yeah, the rate at which we're having um, this one, there's a kidnap here, there's a, a particular. Generally, sure, Nigeria is not, um, is not safe. Yeah. And it yeah. all starts from us. You should look out for one another. Don't just like go out and feel like you just you'll be back in few um moments. You, you don't know what 
uh, can happen the next thing you say. Mm. Understandable or it will be very good if you are able to like be, be security conscious of what's happening around you and tell people around you that oh you need to get to somewhere or you're traveling to this place and also our government also have um, a whole lot of things or rules to see. I think we should start um voting for purposeful leadership, not just people that are there to embezzle mm. money and feel like um it's their it's their family <laughs> it's a mm. family affair. No, we should mm. we should have zero tolerance for corruption and punish individuals that their hands are caught in cookies jar mm-hmm. for any offense yeah. irrespective of their position because People do get with whatever um, they do in this Nigeria. I don't know. Most especially all these are uh, um, top government officials. So anything like embezzlement and the report it to our well known EFC and all in the next few months we won't see anything. So we should we should actually like vote for leaders that propose for really, really, really important and not just feel like we should just we should think um, ahead of, um, let's say, tribalism or religion or feel like oh, this person is not my tribe, I won't for this person. No, we should like think ahead. Mm. Don't just feel like uh, it's all about religion or tribalism. No, we should. We are all one, actually. And we should start mm. looking out for each other. Beautiful. Yeah, I think that's it. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, yeah, gender inequality. Yeah, how can I forget that? I once applied for a particular role and it got like you are a girl that you can't do, you can't perform well. Like, who, who does that? Wow. I don't know. Are you serious? Then, yes. Exactly. It was later when the man was like, oh, can I see your CV? And you are like, eh. Let's give it to try, but as I went, he told me that I can apply. I just told him that I know that there's no need. He's already dealt with me. And there are some parts of, um, there are some parts in Nigeria, yeah, that there are some female um, child that they still don't go to school. Mm-hmm. Of course. Yes. Of course. Exactly. So, gender inequality also is really killing. And what a man can do, a woman can do better. I don't know, but then. <laughs> Okay. Okay. It's <laughs> giving it's giving Chimamanda. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, David, the only Nigerian diaspora on this call. Okay, actually, we have two Nigerians in diaspora. Musa, okay, I, mean, I know I'm not gonna ask Musa. So David. <laughs> I think. I think. Uh, first of all, I agree with everything everyone said. The education, um, I also think that the um, opportunities should be um, available for all and for I think, I think the only, probably the thing that I would press for more is just the, 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 the the Nigeria of, of my dream is, is, is more than probably I'll, I'll call for one that there is a unified identity of what it is to be Nigerian. Mm. Right. Um, and, and added to that, the, the fact that uh, in Nigeria, where that identity is protected at all costs, mm-hmm. protected and dignified at all costs, protected and dignified. So, in in the sense of, of okay, yes, we are there is the identity of we being Nigerian, and this is what it means. Then there's also the fact of if 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 the idea of being Nigerian is important to a senator, for example, right? Then it is just the idea of making stuff or making laws 
right, to protect the posterity of like other Nigerians becomes more important, I think, than just uh, oh my constituency or uh, the people that are directly benefiting from me or the people that I know. Uh, that I know this is a more vague way, but if this that's this is the best way I can articulate it actually. Just the idea of having a common share of what it is to be Nigerian and then a government or a people that does their best to protect that that dignify. Yeah. Beautiful. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for sharing. This has been very very insightful very very insightful all right so one last question before i let you guys go when you Your guys question are not is at... <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> sorry go on when no, you guys go on, are not... when you guys when you guys are not staring at the computer screen what do you guys do for fun what do you guys do for outside work what what what, what are your interests or hobbies or what do you do for fun generally I go, I think I'm going to start with you because you don't look like you do anything but fun. But <laughs> <laughs> God almighty. I'm oh, just man. saying, just saying. Okay, so yeah. I, I keep I keep asking myself what I do for fun as I'm my computer screen is I play Call of Duty on my phone, but that's also facing the screen. My exactly. Right? So yeah. Uh uh. Uh well, I have a whiteboard behind me, and it's not a screen. And what I do on it is I draw sketches of design mobile apps on it, basically. But that's still yeah, it's also for, that's still work related now. <sighs> uh, but yes, but I'm not business. Well, I, I'm afraid to say you're right. Right. No, no, <laughs> no, no, that's no, that's not that's not. I have discussions. Yeah, I read. I read. I read. Okay, so I, yeah, I read. Yeah. Okay. Read. We'll take that. That's the nerdy, but it's better than nothing at least. So yeah. I read. for sharing. Uh, Kasa, how about you? <laughs> yeah, I listen to music and I read novels too. Mm, awesome. David. Um, so generally generally if I try to cycle a lot, mm. uh, also because of like I, I'm in a place where I like cycling is heavily encouraged. So most people don't take college like a hobby, but but then again, I try to like just walk around and just experience nature a bit. Um, I travel mm. um, a lot as well almost too much for my good and um yeah so those are the main things i do outside like work that like i find interesting and then i just try, I, I try to like you know pick up new experiences like um david mentioned that up, very recently up until very recently if you had asked me that question i wouldn't know what to answer you oh wow and so i had this very deliberate about um you know, mm. mapping out what is what it is that um, I do for fun and, mm. and trying to like keep uh, those things put together because otherwise you can actually like even if it's like watching a movie or everything you're looking at the system and it's, mm. it's also that is also problematic at least for me. So. Mm. All right. Thank you so much for sharing. All right, guys. Thank you so much. This has been amazing. I've learned, I've personally learned a lot, you know, aside tech, just um, a lot of like valuable insights that I feel like I, I will definitely apply. So thank you so much for, for sharing. Thank Ami, you for... Ami, Ami, you sure you don't have one more question to ask? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have any more questions. I'm done. Don't worry, I'm from space. Okay. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you, David. Thank you, Ergo. Thank you, Kalsa. And I wish you guys all the best going forward in, in whatever it is that you're doing. And, you know, yeah, you know, thank you for, for, for doing this. This has been good. All right, guys. Thank you for listening to another episode of my startup story. We'll be back next week 
with another smashing, another exciting, another insightful episode. But while you're at it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, it's Nairoption. Also follow us on our socials at Nairoption NG. Till next week, uh, stay inspired, stay safe. Uh, this is not supposed to be an inspired to respire to Maguire, but yeah, <laughs> that's what comes to my mind. So yeah, all right, see you guys next week. Bye. Yeah, thank you for having us. Thank you, Ami. Thank you, Nisha. Thank, thank you, David and Carlton. Thank you, Nisha. Thank you, David. Thank you, Ami. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you.